bit of artistic license is a wonderful thing, isn't it? So, question for you. What do Harold Bishop, Bobby Ewing and Cindy Beale all have in common? Give you a second to think about that one. All soap characters who come back from the dead. They were dead, but lo and behold, they're not. Artistic license indeed. Tonight, Cindy returns to Albert Square, 25 years after being killed off in EastEnders. Tim Muffet picks up the story. He's taking us to Walford. Adam, Michelle, so good to meet you. Oh, yeah. What a Hello. place to meet you. Lovely to see you, lovely to see you, lovely to see you. Welcome oh, yeah. back to Wolford. Thank you. How does it feel? Weird. How, how long have you got? <laughs> it's 25 years. <laughs> it feels very weird. I've wanted to visit for so long. Hello, Cathy. You're dead. Simply always did have a way of putting the wool over people's eyes. It's different now. How long have you been away? Two, two and a half. Two and a half. Well, I'm oh. 25 years. Yeah. A lot has happened. <laughs> it's changed because the place where you got me shot's been tarmacked over. <laughs> Such yeah. a long time ago, I can't... I've forgotten it. Oh, really? <laughs> Convenient. Oh, yeah, watch out. Well, Michelle, I mean, when you were asked to come back to EastEnders, I mean, how easy or how difficult a decision was it? My agent kind of messaged me and I was like, what? No, 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 no. And uh, so I was, I was shocked. Well, I don't know how to tell you this. What? Cindy's dead. I was like intrigued to think how are they ever going to do this, you know, and kind of make it realistic, you know, rather than of a Ewing in the shower kind of thing, you know. And, oh, that would have um, been good. <laughs> And anyway, it we could have got we could have had a shower soon. She creates unhappiness and confusion everywhere she goes. I feel so being back in Watford. It's like I'm coming home. It's it's tough for Cindy being back after 25 years, and yeah, and you're supposed to be dead. So mm. there's a lot of explaining to do. A little bit. So let's go back to the 80s. Your first appearances, 1985 for you, Adam. Yeah. What's your memory of that day? I had absolutely no idea. How what was old were coming. you then? I was 16. Hey, Pops! What are you doing here? I'll come get me dinner money. The early days was chaos, because I mean, there was only four channels. Um, there wasn't all the choice people have got now, all the different streaming services, and the viewing figures were massive. You, you couldn't go anywhere without anybody recognising you. I'll leave it out. Dan, I'm playing Mark on the machines. That money's meant to pay for your dinner. I'm playing with my own money. People back then used to think you really were the character. Hi, Cindy. I had a great time overnight. Yeah, me too. I thought you were going to trap, Jason. I was originally in for 11 episodes and I stayed quite a long time. And it was kind of uh, gritty, wasn't it? It covered real kind of social issues. And it was a huge it bed for kind of working class actors, which didn't really happen that much on TV. We kind of grew up. We grew up yeah. in people's living rooms. Surprise! Surprise! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, Cindy, shall we? Just <laughs> Trevor, come on. It took over your life and it was 24 hours. I mean, it was endless, wasn't mm. it, actually? Simon! Don't go! We could go away together now. Nobody would know. It's not too late. And some people co I mean, I kind of coped with it OK. Some people did, some people didn't. You just want the boys. This is the only way you can think of getting them back. That's what this is all about. Isn't it? And actually, kind of towards the end, I think that was one of the reasons why I felt like I wanted to go, because it did... It, it was all-encompassing. I mean, you've both been involved in some of the most iconic, as no views were, but iconic plot lines you. in British show. Stephen isn't your son. <coughs> I can't lie to you anymore. You're not Stephen's father. <coughs> Ian! Do you know what? I was so lucky. I count myself really because I had such great, you know, stories. I had brilliant, you know, I, you don't want to come into a big show like, a show like this and sit in the cafe and just have a cup of tea. Oh, yes, I forgot. Poor little hard done by Cindy. Don't you dare talk to me like that, Ian. Talk to you like what? I mean, Cindy, what are you playing at? He writes really well for women. Oh, please. Somebody help me, please. He's taken my children. It was fantastic to be a part of that. So by bringing you two back, is this an, an attempt, do you think, to kind of reinvigorate those glory days? Oh, God, no. <laughs> it's nostalgia, isn't it? And people like... I suppose people like old characters. I still love you. 
There was never a time when I didn't. Writers obviously liked writing for us, and I think that's what it is, is, is them coming up with good stories. And if they continue to come up with good stories, then we're happy, aren't we? Mm. Thanks ever so much. Um, I've actually got to get a train now. Can I get a train from there? Uh, it's not real, sadly. It's nicely done, wasn't it? There's always drama. There's always drama here. Always. That's it from us this morning. Breakfast back at six tomorrow. Have a good day. Bye-bye.